Not everything is about the sexy microprocessor or GPU in your desktop. Memory is one of the major categories in the semiconductor world. The memory industry as it currently exists is dominated by a number of incumbents. The reason for this is because memory is a brutal and cyclical industry, but it can also serve as a critical starting point for many semiconductor companies looking to nurture their fabbing experience. The industry's dynamics also make it easier for new low-cost entrants to sell into the market. One of those new entrants into the market is Wuhan-based Yangtze Memory Technology Company. The company began as a low-cost supplier, but has impressively scaled the value chain in recent years. In this video, I want to take a look at one of China's leading memory companies and one of its flagship national semiconductor champions. But first, I want to talk a little bit about the Patreon. If you want to help support the channel, I suggest taking a look at the early access tier. You can get access to a large backlog of videos queued up and waiting to be released to the public. The number fluctuates from time to time, but right now it is about 15 or so. So head on over to the Patreon page and take a look. I deeply appreciate anything you'd be able to sign up for. Thanks, now let's on with the show. Memory chips are semiconductors, same as the fast Intel processors inside your computers. But the Intel chips are classified as being logic chips, meaning that they perform mathematical operations. Memory chips, on the other hand, store data. There are two types of memory in the market. DRAM, dynamic random access memory, and flash memory. DRAM refers to the 8 gigabytes or 16 gigabytes in your MacBook. This memory can only store data temporarily. It vanishes when the power is turned off, but in return you are able to access it much faster. Flash memory is the type of memory that is in your USB stick or serves as the faster access data storage medium in your computer. It is capable of retaining its data even after the computer's power is turned off. China's memory market is massive. You can't make a computer or a smartphone without having both of these types of memory. Well, I, I guess you can make a computer with a spinning hard drive, but it's certainly hard to make one without DRAM. Out of the 150 or so billion of semiconductors that the country imports each year to make their products, memory represents about 35% of that amount. So it's a huge market. Despite this, domestic memory makers held just 3% market share in 2018. The reason for this is that memory chips are a cheap commodity that at the lower end competes on price. It's easier to fab, and the product has little differentiation from other low-cost competitors. Scale, technical mastery, and market position are what matters in this industry, and Chinese memory makers lag far behind. The global NAND flash market is dominated by a few companies mostly clustered in Asia. The market incumbents are Samsung, South Korea, Keoxia, Japan, Western Digital US, Micron US, and SK Hynix, South Korea. The DRAM market is almost literally just Samsung, SK Hynix, and Micron. Competing against these giants, Yangtze Memory is the most advanced and promising domestic memory company in China. Their specialty in producing NAND memory is impressive. In my video about Tsinghua Unigroup, I mentioned Yangtze Memory in passing. Here we're going to flesh out the story a little more, a story that actually intersects with another video of mine. The company that is now Yangtze Memory begins with SMIC, currently China's leading independent semiconductor foundry. Isn't that cool? It's like a Marvel movie universe. Everything is connected. Anyway, I go into more in my SMIC explainer video, but SMIC's operating style throughout its wild early years was to strike deals with local city governments in China so to get state funding for its expensive fabs. Wuhan had been party to one of these deals. In order to get results faster, SMIC set up Wuhan's foundry to build memory. But the thing about the memory market that I already mentioned is that though it can be relatively easy to enter, for that same reason, it is also a brutal market short on profit. SMIC's Wuhan factories endured years of losses. Uncomfortable about these seemingly unending operating losses, Wuhan terminated the SMIC partnership and established their own independent foundry. Wuhan Xingxing Semiconductor. In 2008, an American company called Spansion, a flash memory joint venture between AMD and Fujitsu, decided to outsource some of its foundry work to Wuhan Xingxing. In 2014, the two companies expanded their partnership and allied to develop 3D NAND. 3D NAND is an advanced version of memory chips. Older generations of memory are called planar NAND. 
They are flat 2D structures. 3D NAND, on the other hand, looks like skyscrapers and can have many dozens of such layers. It allows for much more storage in the same amount of space. Samsung first commercialized this technology back in 2013. 3D NAND is difficult to fab at scale, but memory firms need to do it in order to produce products that can compete at the higher rungs of the market. Achieving it is indicative of a firm with potential in the market. Likely due to several promising advances in the 3D NAND field, in July 2016, semiconductor holding company Tsinghua Unigroup purchased a majority stake in Wuhan Qinqin Semiconductor and established a holding company to govern it. This holding company was named in reference to its location on the Yangtze River, Yangtze Memory. Tsinghua has been interested in the semiconductor and memory market for a long time. The company is the owner of Unisoc, one of China's largest fabless companies. They had also unsuccessfully attempted to purchase shares in American memory giants Micron Technology and Western Digital. When that failed, the company turned inwards. Then Tsinghua CEO Zhao Weiguo vowed to invest $100 billion over the next 10 years to turn Yangtze memory into a world-class domestic memory chip company, one that can compete with the likes of Samsung and SK Hynix. Yangtze memory's ability to be competitive in the NAND memory market depends on its scaling the technological sophistication ladder. And more than just announcing a breakthrough on a press release, Yangtze's manufacturing yields need to be good too, or else the company's cost structures cannot compete in the global market. In 2019, Yangtze Memory announced the mass production of a type of 3D NAND with 64 layers using a 20 nanometer process. This is a critical breakthrough that instantly puts the company into the same realm as the market leaders. Furthermore, they could produce 60,000 wafers of it each month by the end of 2020. This would be close to Intel's estimated 85,000 wafers per month capacity, but far behind Samsung's 470,000 monthly wafer capacity. Intel later sold their NAND flash business to SK Hynix for $9 billion in late 2020. In April 2020, they announced their next big step, that they have developed a 128-layer 3D NAND memory chip. Again, they expect mass production to begin sometime in the following year. If and when that happens, then Yangtze Memory is going to bring a near-leading edge product into the NAND market. Some of Yangtze's product will go to manufacturing partners, makers and sellers of laptops and the like. But the company is also selling its SSD products directly to consumers under the Zhitai brand. Are consumers buying Yangtze's products? We do not know. The company is not public, so they don't need to report how consumer sales are doing. But considering that NAND prices hit a down cycle in 2019 and COVID has been throwing things into a twirl throughout 2020, it is likely that sales are starting off slow, which is fine. Much of Yangtze's great memory advances are on the NAND side. When it comes to DRAM, the temporary memory inside your computer, Yangtze is still behind the current incumbents. The company is competing with various other Chinese companies in the space for this, but nothing solid yet. DRAM is harder to manufacture than NAND due to several required extra steps, but not impossible. We should probably look to anticipate some announcement in the coming years. The government has strongly gotten behind Yangtze memory, and in April 2018, President Xi visited the Wuhan factory. He gave a speech there in which he said that in order to achieve China's 200-year goals, some major core technologies must overcome difficulties on their own. Such a visit shows official approval at the highest levels of political leadership. The current flash memory incumbents are bracing for the anticipated entry of Yangtze and other Chinese memory national champions into the global markets. Within one to two years, the company is probably going to surpass Micron in terms of production capacity, flooding the market with this new supply. Furthermore, Yangtze's announced goal of eventually getting to 300,000 wafers a month adds 10 to 20% to current supply and will certainly cause disruptions, assuming the product is good. It would not be the first time it has happened. Chinese companies entered the LED and solar cell markets and crashed margins for the old incumbents. In the case of the European solar incumbent, margins fell from 25% to zero in just three years. Even before Yangtze's entrance, the NAND market was pretty competitive, with five major players. Despite this, the incumbents have enjoyed high margins, preventing the industry from consolidating. The recent sale of Intel's NAND memory business, though, is indicative of the future. The memory world is bracing for Yangtze memory's rising presence. Alright everyone, that's it for today. 
Um, thanks for watching. Um, if you want more content, feel free to hit up the email newsletter and sign up. If you want to drop me a line and say hello, you can email me at john at asianometry.com. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Take care of yourselves out there. It's a crazy world. I'll see you again soon.